I'm so sorry if I look a little sweaty here and I sound a little winded throughout this video. I've been hobbling around on my one foot because y'all know I'm casting up for my recent rack right there. So it sounds like I just left the gym because I'm winded. And believe it or not, you all know how I don't script my videos. I honestly shoot them in one take. I got my top down and I got facing me, right? And I shoot it in one take, unscripted, straight raw to the point. Well, camera A forgot to record. When I pressed the button, only the camera B, my top down, started recording. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time here. And what we're going to be talking about is the new keyboard from Corsair being the K70 Max. Corsair is just maxing us out lately, right? You got to love the dad jokes. Let's go to dive right into the K70 Max. As you can see, it is a full-size keyboard. In your box, you're going to get your wrist rest, your detachable USB-C cable, a keycap puller, and a couple extra keycaps, your escape, and then your space bar. Let's put those away over there. Again, talking about it being full-size, I want to talk about the build of it here first and it is incredibly solid top to bottom you know what let me go on and get the scale out and i'll show you i mean this thing is no joke lofty let's go to set it on a scale bam we're gonna plop it down we are getting three pounds one ounces i mean this is a lofty booger and it really feels premium you got that top aluminum plate that we know from corsair flip it around to the bottom you got this cool like translucent look and there's a couple things i want to point out here number one your feet nice big chunky rubber feet so it's not going to budge on you and you got two levels of pop out feet as you see you got that small one right down there as well but stock you have a really nice ergonomic incline as you can see here now the thing i want you to keep an eye on is this on the bottom it's not just cosmetic right it's really cool because a lot of us if you're on pc you got your headset you're going to put into your io or maybe you got an amp right there so you don't want that cable hanging around right you can just bam slide it right through there and you're good to go or heck even a mouse just put it over here and it almost serves as like a mini bungee you know what i mean so really cool that you can utilize that down here now flipping it over you got your usb-c then you have their tournament switcher which you can just flop over and then lock it over with this you've seen this on all corsair keyboards lately and what that does is just kind of disable your macros and puts it to like a regular rgb that you have set for tournament maybe RGB a little lower and something like that, right? Anyways, looking at the top of the keyboard here, you can see you got your media controls and your volume walker, and then a dedicated mute button, which I really like. A lot of keyboards, you got that press down will be your mute, but I love how you got everything kind of dedicated there. Swinging over here, you got your Windows lock, which keep a, keep a listen to that, because we're going to talk a little bit more about this Windows lock button later on. RGB, your profile, and of course, like Corsair, you got all your cap locks and you know, Windows Lock stuff that's going to show up here. As far as the keycaps on this keyboard, they are very thick, durable, PBT, double shot keycaps. The cool thing about them, as you look around them here, you don't see those ridges like you see on a lot of keyboards where they pop them out of the mold. So again, nice little touches you're seeing here on this keyboard. And as far as the wrist rest, as you see, you got the little Corsair logo in the middle. Fairly nice and very plush. And it's kind of like that, uh, what do you call that PU type leather stuff? Or I'm not too sure what it is. But anyways, easy to clean. Magnetizes right with those little lips right down there. And you do have the rubber feet and that translucent look right on the bottom as well. Now, there are a couple things aesthetically that I'm not sure you're able to catch in the camera that I want to show you. Number one that I think is really cool is this little like kind of techie camouflage up at the top. I, I don't know. I just love it. It would have been cool if they did it throughout the entire case. A personal preference. I just think it's cool now, now the two things that are kind of weird number one the keycaps again very uh, rugged and solid but they look kind of gray to me i don't know if you look at them like this like the case isn't fully black it's more a dark gunmetal and you can see the keycaps look even lighter I don't know, maybe that's just me right there, but uh, they definitely look great to me. Now, one thing I don't like, if you look at the keyboard like this, you might be able to see it pretty good. You see that shiny little bit right there, that line? Now, that goes all on the side. You can see it perfectly right there. I do not like that because, again, you got that nice gunmetal kind of stealthy look. And then this little silver line going all the way around, it just gives it a kind of a cheap vibe. But now I want to talk about the juicy stuff within this keyboard, and that is the switches here. The Corsair MGX, if I'm thinking about that right. Corsair Magnetic Switches. We've seen it in the SteelSeries Apex Pro. OmniPoint Switches, Razer, Wooting, same type of deal here. And I'm going to pull up IQ on the screen and show you as far as your actuation, which I believe you can adjust it from 0.4 to 3.6, and you can get double actuation as far as your initial press, then another press, and then as far as that release point that you want. So a lot of customization you can do within these switches. So as you saw in Corsair's IQ there, as far as the adjustability and tweaking this keyboard, I mean, there's so much in there on top 
of your RGB, your macros, all that stuff, which we all know, right? Just talking about the switches here. Uh, again, a lot of customization there. A couple things jumped into my head uh, using this keyboard, right? No, number one being, I wish with all this customization we're seeing from Corsair with their mice, with the tilt adjustment and stuff, extra buttons, now these switches, I wish IQ was a little easier. I'm usually one of like, yo, IQ's fine. Set it, you're done. You know what I mean? You adjust your RGB and EQ or something like that, and you're fine. But with, with these extra customization abilities now and their products coming up, I think it's time for IQ to refresh and just be simplified a little bit. You know what I mean? It's just my opinion there. It's still usable, but I wish it was simplified. Talking about simplified, this is number two I want to talk about. And I'm going to pull out the SteelSeries Apex Pro, right? So talking about adjusting the switches here, at least I haven't figured it out on this keyboard yet. I wish there was an easier way to adjust the actuation on the fly. Talking Apex Pro, this screen, it seems gimmicky, right? But I love how you can go in there, adjust your actuation, see your actuation and just tweak it right on the fly. Now, yeah, on this one, you can just create a profile. You're good to go. On the uh, Razer one with their adjustable one, I believe it was the number row where you can adjust the actuation and then see where that actuation goes as far as high or low right there. But again, I think SteelSeries nailed it with the screen right there as far as simplicity and convenience. Again, not being able to do it over here, or at least I can't find out how to do it. That's a little bit of a stinker. But again, with these adjustable switches on this one, uh, the K70 Max, the Apex Pro, or Razer, or Wooting, me personally, I'm a set it and forget it kind of person. Kind of like I was talking about IQ, right? With my adjustable switches, I put them at 1.0 millimeter actuation, like a Cherry Speed switch or something like that, and then I just leave it. I never adjust it. So maybe I'm just being nitpicky. I don't know. Let me down in the comments. Do you really adjust your actuation with these uh, magnetic switches on keyboards these days, or are you like me, where you set it, forget it, and you're done. All right, so now I wanna go on and give you the sound test of this keyboard. As I was just talking about the build and stuff on it, it is phenomenal. So again, let me move my table up here, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it, get this keyboard a little closer to the camera. So of course, sir, as you know, they always have that incredibly solid build, as we've talked about in many videos, including this one here. But of course, there's now been implementing dampening foam, multiple layers of dampening foam within their keyboards, and wow, they are doing it right. So anyways, let me go and give you a quick listen here. No tactile steps in a wheel, but you do got this really nice premium roll right there. So as you just heard with the sound test, I mean, at the core, it sounds pretty darn good, but it's not perfect. And I'm not a keyboard snob, custom keyboard, this, that, the other. But I think this, the, the stabs could use a little bit of work. I don't see any lube on them right there. And it's an easy fix, an incredibly easy fix. It's right in there and you're gonna be done. You know what I mean? Like some of them, like the shift key feels pretty darn good. When you come over to the space bar, you feel the sides just a little bit clanky. I'm talking mild, right? But again, it got that great sound right here. And that space bar kind of ruins this. Again, very easy fix. But what I want to do is give you some sound test comparisons of some similar boards. And the first one I want to compare it to is the SteelSeries Apex Pro, being magnetic switches, magnetic switches. Now I got to pull my keyboard down a little bit more so you can get this into the shot. Let me give you uh, again the K70. Not to the apex. Now, I also want to give you a sound comparison to the new Razer keyboard, the Black Widow V4 Pro. And why I want to pull this one out is, uh, again, they're kind of built the same. Razer's now implemented dampening foam, just like Corsair here. Now, the switches are different. Razer's using the yellow switches, kind of like a cherry silver, but a little bit better over here. And you got your magnetic switches. But anyways, at the core, let's get that sound test here.
so after getting a sound test of the keyboard and then a couple comparisons right there, I mean, we got to agree at the core, it, it sounds pretty darn good. I, I think an easy adjustment on a stabs and your sound is a pound. I, yeah, I would love to see it, you know, corrected out of the box and being, you know, the, the stabs and, and stuff like that being as solid as the core switches, it would have been absolutely amazing. So again, it's an easy fix, kind of a bummer that we got it right there. Um, one thing I did notice, again, the Razer one feels great, but it, it almost has the same kind of sound characteristics on the stabs. This has a little bit more of a uh, premium sound. I don't, I don't know if we say that, you know, sound is preference, but again, uh, the Razer one was a little more high pitched, but definitely when we were listening to the Steel Series one and just using them, right? Like using this, just, ah, man, it feels good. Same with on the Razer. Going over back to the Apex Pro, it's like, it feels cheap. I mean, it's a fantastic keyboard. I don't think I'm hating on it, but it truly feels cheap. Now let's go and take a look at the RGB on the K70 Max. And by the way, I have a window open over there, but all of my studio lights are off. So you kind of got that natural setting right here. And, and a couple of things that stand out to me that are really nice about the RGB is you got the minimal uh, light array kind of bouncing off of the case. It doesn't look excessive. I think it's a pretty nice combo, but more importantly, the keycaps. With these being PBT keycaps, this RGB is very, very crisp. And why I think, uh, or how I think Corsair is achieving that, as you know, Corsair is kind of known to use a little bit of a thicker font. So again, I think that's really playing into here with the keycaps being PBT, where you're seeing them kind of, you know, fading out a little bit here. And there are some other boards of here across the entire board. It looks very vibrant. Now, one more feature to talk about, as I mentioned in the beginning, with the Windows lock button here. I know all of you are like, dude, it's a stinking Windows lock button. We understand it. We get it, right? Well, I want to save it for the end is because, well, I couldn't use this feature. Let me go and load up my phone here and pull up an email so I can actually talk about this because this is not a feature that's going to be released with the keyboard. It's going to come out in two stages in a firmware update and then a software update. Firmware update coming in August, software update coming in sometime in Q4, they're saying here. And what that is going to be is rapid fire switches. Now we heard about Corsair doing this in their um, mouses before where you press it, release it, bam, it's just really short, right? That's kind of what they call it there. And that's going to be the same type of instance here. They're calling it, uh, where was it here? Let me see. Uh, keystrokes become dynamic. And what they're saying right there is, so you got your adjustable actuation points, which you can get to two in there, then your release point, right? But what you can set on here with the rapid fire is you press it down and right when you release it, not when it's totally let go up here, it can uh, count as that, uh, that point right there. And then when you let it go, it will go to that. So kind of think about it as putting it a little easier to understand is you don't have to press that switch all the way down, right? It's just kind of like, you can kind of be like this. It's hard for me to do, you know? It, it's one of those features, I think, was it Wooting that had this or Razor? I don't know, maybe both of them. But anyways, you don't have to slap that key all the way down. Now me personally, when I'm gaming, I'm WASD in, I'm always pressing that key down. I don't think I can train myself to just lightly press it. I'm too aggressive. I'm not getting in there. You know what I mean? So again, that's not a feature that's going to be on the keyboard. It will be coming on later down the road, but it's an interesting feature, but I don't know if it's a feature a lot of people will use. Now I want to focus on that topic as we're closing out this video here, talking about like the rapid fire switches. Is it something a lot of people will use, right? So when you compile this whole keyboard up, right, there's a lot of things I think you're going to have to justify, right? Do you care about the sound of your keyboard? Can you go buy, you know, $20 keyboard and be perfectly fine, you know, because you are buying that premium build here, that sound dampening and stuff. Uh, more importantly, the switches. Do you care about adjustable switches? Do you like the Apex Pro or anything like that? Right? Are you going to utilize that adjustment? Well, can you just go get a keyboard with Cherry MX Speed Silver? It's like me. I leave mine at, you know, one millimeter actuation and I'm fine. The rapid fire, will you utilize that? And that's kind of at the core of this keyboard. You got to compile all of that. And that's what's going to justify the price tag of 230 bucks. Now, I'm going to say that's a price tag that's up there. But when we think about Apex Pro, it's 200 bucks, right? You talk about the Razer keyboard. I mean, it's right around the same price as this. And when we compile it and we look at it at that aspect, right? It's packing a lot. I mean, it's, I can't sit here and deny it. This is a phenomenal keyboard top to bottom from the build. A little lube on the stabs, you'd be good to go, you know. But the build, the features, functions, is packing. This is a future-proof keyboard. I mean, it's an awesome product. But again, for me, I wouldn't use rapid fire. I wouldn't use adjustable switches. I like it at its core. 
And, and again, I kind of hope Corsair implements something like this at its core, which I'm sure they will. We've been seeing Corsair really stepping up in their game in the keyboard space. Heck, they just acquired Drop. So I think we're going to see a lot of cool things from Corsair. But with something this feature packed, you got to sit down and justify, uh, do these features, you know, uh, justify that price. Why are you willing to put your money into these features? I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the new Corsair K70 Max? But more importantly, are you guys as excited as me seeing Corsair finally put their foot down in the keyboard space? It's taken them a while, right? It's taken them a little while, but it's awesome seeing what they're doing here. And I think they're just getting started and I'm super excited. Like Corsair, yo, hook it up with the TKL in this. Let's get a TKL, right? It's game over. So anyways, thank you all so much for coming by for this video. I hope I was able to help you out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope we'll catch you in the next one. Bye now.